Welcome to Waltrip Unfiltered. We've headed west, and we're in Hollywood. We're at the Fox Sports Studios just outside of Los Angeles in Century City. And we're going to talk all things NASCAR today, like my Mount Rushmore. It's NASCAR drivers. Who would you put on your mountain? My latest edition, Kyle Busch. He's up there right now. Plus, we're going to interview Haley Deegan. Man, love this kid. And I believe with her experience and where she is right now, she could become the best female NASCAR racer ever. I'll explore that more with you. Plus, talk all about what we saw at ISM Raceway last weekend. Get you ready for Fontana this weekend. And we're going to go live right now. Green play, green play. You know what I want to talk about today? Kyle Busch. You remember a couple weeks ago we talked about Kyle Busch? It got quite the stir from the NASCAR fans across the world, and it's just gotten more and more intense lately as he sets at 199 victories across the top three series of NASCAR. 52 cup wins when he drove into victory lane last weekend at ISM Raceway in Phoenix, and that's got everybody talking about the fact that if he's able to win either on Saturday here at Auto Club Speedway in Los Angeles, which, you know, I just love coming out here. I've enjoyed the last couple of days. I got a tour of the Fox Studios. I went to the famous Will Turn Theater where Jamie Johnson is playing. I, I know Jamie Johnson. And I'm, I'm, I'm walking by and they're rolling in his equipment and it's got his name on it. I said, hey, I know that dude. Could you tell Jamie I'm out here? And they looked at me like, no, we can't tell Jamie you're out here. But anyway, it's been a great trip out west. I've had a great time. Always look forward to this trip. And and the racing is is so, so much anticipated with, with the 2019 cars and the way that we're seeing more drafting, more passing. Heck, more people are watching on TV. The ratings are up. The, 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 the vibe around the sport is incredible. And we all want to talk about Kyle Busch. It comes back to that. Well, it doesn't compare to Richard Petty. So what? So here's the deal. Let me explain this to you. What Richard Petty did will never be done again. That makes it pretty special, right? If you do something that nobody will ever do, no matter what, (laughs) that's why he's the king. He won 200 NASCAR races, 200 cup races, and that record will never be touched again. David Pearson's 105 victories, racing basically a part-time schedule. I mean, he his winning percentage is the best ever in NASCAR. I don't think anybody will ever win at that rate again in the cup series. Of course, Dale Earnhardt, not only... Is Dale Earnhardt seven-time champion, the intimidator, but he grew the sport through the 80s and 90s. His popularity was unmatched, and people just wanted to tune in to see Dale. That grew the sport. That's a great thing. And Jimmy Johnson, seven championships, right? His seven championships came at the height of, of the most competitive racing ever in NASCAR, where we are today. And for him to be able to achieve that through all kinds of different scenarios with the rules. We had the chase. We didn't have the chase. We had the playoffs. We had eliminated. Blah, blah. We had it all. And Jimmy Johnson persevered once. So he's special. That's four special drivers. And in my mind, there's a fifth. And his name is Jeff Gordon. Now, I want you to listen to me for a minute. When I first came up with my my best NASCAR drivers, unarguable, best ever, it was those four I just mentioned. It was Richard Petty, David Pearson, Jimmy Johnson, Dale Earnhardt. They were my guys in no particular order. Now there's a fifth that have joined those guys, and it's Jeff Gordon. And Jeff Gordon, uh, because a lot of the same reasons why I talked about how special Dale was. Jeff Gordon showed up, California kid. No kid had shown up and gotten a fast car and went out and won races and did the things that Jeff did. You had to go through the Bush series. You had to be around for a long time to get those coveted rides. But Jeff did it at a very young age and, and won 93 races and four championships, three day 25, blah, blah. You know, he's done it all. I don't know if anybody will ever win 93 races again. But if there's one guy that might, his name is Kyle Busch. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and reserve him a place in my top drivers of all time in NASCAR. I'm going to build Mount NASCAR. And it's going to have six spots on it. And Richard Petty, David Pearson, Dale Earnhardt, Jimmy Johnson, Jeff Gordon. And I'm going ahead right now and putting... Kyle Busch, right up on that Mount NASCAR with those other legends. And you want to know the main reason why? He's not done yet. Everybody talks about what he's done. 
his, his cake's not baked. He's still in the kitchen. He doesn't show any sign of slowing down. And if he could possibly hang around for 10 more years and win five races a year, <laughs> that gets him past 100 victories. And then do we start talking about can he win 250? Can he win 350? What is possible for this guy? And I just think that one thing I can promise you, no one else will ever win 200 races across the top three series. NASCAR limits the amount of times that, that cup stars can race down in the trucks in the Xfinity series. That was a move they made so that the, the fans didn't, didn't necessarily buy into thinking it was cool for Kyle Busch to be out there winning those races. Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick, you name it. So they limit those opportunities. So because of that, no one will ever have the chance to do what Kyle did. And it's the same with Richard Petty. No one's ever going to have a chance to win 200 NASCAR Cup Series races. Not in the Monster Energy Cup Series because there's less races and there just isn't time to be able to do that. So what Kyle has accomplished is incredible. Celebrate it. And by the way, don't compare it to Richard Petty. You, you, it's not the same. And don't talk about David Pearson, what he did, and how many championships Earnhardt won. And Kyle's only got one. Those six guys that I just named – have already done more in this sport than anyone else ever has. They deserve their spot on Mount NASCAR, built by Michael Waltrip. So enjoy what Kyle's doing. Remember, he's not done. He's going to do a lot more. And just respect and appreciate him and give him the love that I think he deserves. So we've talked about a lot here. I talked a little bit about the, the great racing, the, the fans. I, I'm a big fan, as you know, of the 2019 car. I don't think the racing is disappointed. I've talked to Ray Everham. I've heard on Sirius XM NASCAR folks calling in that, that have been in the sport for a long time. They're like, man, this is entertaining stuff. This is good stuff. And what I'm really looking forward to is what this weekend might look like because, man, California Speedway is wide. It's sweeping. There's not a lot of grip. It's never been repaved. Built in 1997. No, no repaving. But there's a lot of room to, to swing through those big corners. And I think you're going to see guys running three, four, five. And I said it earlier. This is a big breaking news story. I'm going to tell you this. Look at me, Alex. At some point during the race on Sunday, Daryl Waltrip, Jeff Gordon, Mike Joy, they're going to go, six wide. They're six wide. I didn't know they could do that. It's going to happen. And... Man, I just the, the the scene from from Phoenix, the racing, the restarts, the the closing rate that Martin Truex Jr. had late in that race, coming after Kyle Busch, I really enjoyed it, and I know that the product that you're going to see on the racetrack this weekend at Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California, is going to be out of hand. Just check it out. It's my privilege to introduce Haley Deegan. Haley, how you been? I've been doing great. How are you? I'm I'm awesome. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you coming over to the booth when we were in Vegas and talk about not only that big win you had on the dirt track, but announcing your ARCA plans for 2019. Plus, I just wanted to I wanted to talk to you and hang out with you. Your spirit is just so infectious, a lot of fun to be around. So I just wanted to tell you thank you. Yeah, thanks. Vegas is probably one of the most fun races I've been to. Uh, in any race, is fun when you win, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And and I want to I want to just tell a quick story and get your comment on it. For that race, I was uh, at the hotel back at the Strip, and at seven thirty at night, I started watching Dirt Vision on my phone, and I watched until midnight when you made that daring last lap pass and got the victory. And you're the reason why I watched all that. You have such a great following, and and you you didn't disappoint on that occasion. How does it feel to know so many people care about you and how you're doing? That's what I love about racing is that I've been able to build a fan base um, throughout my career. And I like showing people what I'm doing. I like showing people like when we are successful, why we're successful. And when we do have bad racing, like what happened and being able to explain myself on a bigger platform. Well, I love that race particularly because I think 
like um, you told me on on the TV that that practice didn't go good. You weren't as fast as as you as you thought you would be. You went there expecting to win the race, and you had to overcome some struggles throughout practice to get in a position late to get the victory. Yeah, I think that weekend was um, the most up and downs I've had in the whole race. Weekend. Just started out a half season in pace. We came out uh, strong. We were like a half second faster than everyone else. And all of a sudden, the track, every time you went on the track, it changed. You had to change your car every single time you went out. That was the biggest thing, just how many swings you had to take at it. And how much I had to change my line, being someone that comes from off road racing. I wanted to run the cushion, and you couldn't run the cushion. <laughs> As you said in the beginning, it didn't work in the end. And so, that's something I had to figure out and work on myself, not only the car, but I'd say a lot of it was me after that heat race and we didn't do too good that I had to kind of pull myself together, go sit in the semi, do my homework, look at footage, and figure out what I need to do to be a better driver. Well, you did it all that night, and I'm, I was interested also to tell our listeners, uh, it wasn't like you just hopped in a dirt car that weekend. You had been practicing on your on your track at home all week, been in a dirt car like four or five days in a row. Is that is that normal Haley week? A lot of lot of time behind the wheel. Yeah, it is. I think that now I don't have the funding to go get a stock car every single day that I want to. <laughs> I think that would take a lot more funding. Uh, but I'm out there getting in whatever car I can get in. I need the sprint car, go kart, my home track, my player phasers, um, whatever I can get into practice. And yeah, I was in the uh, car um, four days straight to the day. I started out in my off road track doing the test. I practiced in my razor. I went to the sprint car and I went to the go kart track the day before, too. Wow, that's commitment, and that's what it takes to be successful. When you got to the K&N series, what did you think about that step? And now you're facing with another another big step up the NASCAR, or excuse me, the stock car ladder with your ARCA schedule this summer. Yeah, I'll be honest. When I first jumped into the K&N series, it was tough. I struggled. I was just lost. Like uh, Being thrown into a series where I didn't think that I was ready yet just because I didn't have a lot of stock car experience. I had a couple of months, like th- four aces and a late model beforehand. And so I didn't have a lot of experience. I didn't know what to change on the car when they're asking me how the car is. I just, I had to learn by as I went. And it took me about a solid six months before I felt comfortable, could actually get out of the car and be like, this is what I need. This is what I need in this corner, that corner, mid corner, just everything I was able to break down, but it just took time. And so once I got that figured out um, and did all my work, uh, studied footage, talked to the other drivers, that's when we started being successful. Something that I practiced, me and my dad at the cart track, me and my friends at the cart track, uh, off-road racing, just because it's a, such an aggressive form of racing. And it's something you can't really get taught in any other sport as quick as you can and as aggressive as off-road racing. And that's where I came from ever since I was eight years old. So it's something that was kind of instilled in me. Well, you talked about your dad, your family, and, and your history. It's just it's a great story <laughs> and how important your dad has been and played a role in your development as a young racer. Yeah, he's played a huge part, especially in that win at Vegas. Um, he helped me out so much there. Just really, when like I wasn't doing too great in the heat race, he helped me break it down. He helped me look at footage. He'll, he's the dad that stands up the fence and will video every single fast car out there coming show me the videos of what I'm doing compared to what everyone else is doing. And it makes me faster. It honestly helps me a lot just because he's done motocross, supercross. He's done freestyle, rally cars, off-road trucks, and pretty much everything. And he's won in every form. And so I think that's something that you can't take away from him and that he has instilled into him is that winning gene that he wants to bring to me. Well, he's a legend, no doubt, and has done some amazing things. And you are on the verge of being able to capture so many fans that are going to want to follow along with Haley Deegan and see where this road takes her. And the road's taking her to ARCA this summer. I was just curious, do you have any super speedway experience at all? I have no super speedway. Well, I, unless you count Gateway as a super speedway, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> That's the biggest track I've been to. Well, what do you think about that challenge? And who do you have? I know you're part of the Toyota Racing family. Do you have some drivers that you'll be leaning on? What's your support system? And how's how's Dad going to handle this this 180 miles an hour in a race car for you? Yeah, I think that um, there's definitely a lot of Toyota drivers I can look out to, um, truck guys, Xfinity guys, and I think that there's a lot of good guys coming up right now in the ranks with personality. But I think that as of now, and the Toyota, I think it's just getting on the track and getting experience. And Toyota's given me a good opportunity to do that while getting on the simulator, while doing 
um, tests and stuff like that, but it's going to be as it goes. Well, that's going to be fun to watch. I, I have a couple, just a couple more questions. Haley, I was curious. I like golf. I play golf with Denny Hamlin, Larson, and those guys. Uh, what are your hobbies? What do you like to do away from the racetrack? Man, okay, so my manager is actually just talking to me. He goes, you need to go learn how to play golf. I was like, I can play mini golf. I go to top golf. <laughs> I was like, but I've never done like real legit golf. And so that's something I'm going to have to learn. But my hobbies are honestly – I like being at the racetrack. That's where I have. That's my hobby. That's what I do for fun. Well, the announcement you made on Fox the other day about your plans this year to race at Arca, that's awesome. Um, I have a question. Any 2020 truck plans? Do you? How soon do you think you're going to be able to get in a truck or maybe Xfinity cars? Or are you just going to play it by ear and see how this Arca thing, thing goes? I think as of now, it depends on how the Arca thing goes and how the rest of the Canaan West and East season goes. Um, if we keep winning, I'm sure we'll be in trucks soon. But as of now, I just want to keep winning it every time before I move up. Well, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. It's going to be a fun summer for me. I'm going to watch Haley Deegan all year long. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I love that girl. I could talk to her all day long. So so fun. So much looking forward to, to watching this road she's on and see where it takes her. I know there's tons of fans that would love to see her just continue winning all the way to the Cup Series and maybe be the driver that the, – the female driver that comes and wins at the Top Series in NASCAR. And you know why I think she's got a chance to, to maybe – breaking records as a female racer. She's got more stock car experience at this point, at this young age, coming to NASCAR than I think any of the other ladies have. And when I say that, I read a quote from Kevin Harvick, and he told Danica Patrick one day, he said, unless I quit, you're never going to catch my experience. <laughs> my experience is I have that over you. Well, they're not going to have it over on Haley because she's been racing ever since she's been walking. So it's going to be a fun, fun road to follow. What do you say we preview the action at Auto Club Speedway this weekend? Speed's probably upwards of 180, 85 miles an hour down in the corner. We're going to run probably 8, 10 laps, not lifting. We've seen Toyota, Denny Ham with a big win in the Daytona 500, Kyle Busch last weekend at ISM Raceway, and Ford, Penske Racing winning two races with their drivers, Brad Keselowski and Joy Logano. Alex, who's your pick? to maybe step in and, and become a story in 2019. I'm going to go with somebody that has been quiet so far, but steadily making improvements, Kurt Busch. Ah, you like Kurt Busch. I do. He keeps improving every single week with that new team. Fontana's a good track. I think he'll do that. You know, you talk about Kurt, and what about his teammate Kyle Larson? We talked about the Fords of Penske and the, the Toyotas of Gibbs. Maybe it's maybe it's Chip Ganassi Racing with Larson and Kurt Busch that are – are the strongest Chevys. They were certainly the top two Chevrolet finishers last week at ISM, and and Larson's won at Auto Club Speedway, and Kurt's certainly a driver that that you never count him out. He's such a talent, talented racer, and I just see that relationship. I think Kurt being over there with with Kyle has has made that team stronger. So I think that's a that's a really good prediction. But you know, I'm going to go with a guy that – and I also want to give a shout-out to Chase Elliott. I think he'll be a factor this weekend. He's been in the top ten, I think, every time he's raced at Auto Club Speedway. But I'm going to look at Martin Truex Jr. as my favorite to win. And the reason why I like Truex Jr. is because – he was so fast at a couple of races this year. At Atlanta, he was charging to catch Kozlowski, couldn't quite get there. And the same was the case at ISM last weekend. He had a really strong run at the end of the race, closed right up to Kyle Busch. And, and obviously, an uh, awesome performance at Auto Club last year for Truex. I think that number 19 goes to victory lane for the first time. I know one thing, it's going to be a great weekend of NASCAR action at the Auto Club Speedway. I can't wait to watch all the drama unfold. See who's able to win on Saturday. Does Kyle Busch get that 200th win, and do we talk about this for another week? Or you want to just think that maybe he gets beat on Saturday and pulls into victory lane on Sunday? Would it matter to you which one he got the win in? I will say this. I do think he gets beat on, on uh, Saturday. Right on. Chris Bell is going to beat him. Ooh. I also like Cole Custer. Cole Custer, too, yeah. And, you know, that's why I love this debate. Think about this. Kyle Busch is out there. We've seen Tyler Reddick racing him hard at the end of the race in Vegas. We know Cole Custer and Christopher Bell had the measure of him at times throughout the last couple of races. That tells you how good these young talents are. 
If Kyle wasn't out there, we'd be saying they're pretty good against each other. But when you put that bar where Kyle Busch sets it, it certainly gives everyone something to shoot at. So a lot of fun. Thanks, Alex, for your assistant. Thank you, Haley Deegan, for joining us. So much fun to, to have you on the show today. Can't wait to watch the racing this weekend at Auto Club. And guess what? We're going short track racing next weekend. Martinsville, the paperclip. You get mad at California? You can go to Martinsville and pay somebody back. The action's always fun on the short tracks. We'll be here next week. We'll wrap up what happened in California and get you ready to go short tracking in Martinsville. Oh, and, and, and listen, don't forget to subscribe. Use the purple podcast button on your smartphone. And also, give us a five-star rating. We're working hard over here for you. We want to make sure you hear the best guests, get the most informative content that you find anywhere. And we'd appreciate it if you'd tell your friends. Tell your friends to sign up for Waltrip Unfiltered, our podcast episode number five. We'll roll at you next week. We'll be right back.